Hi, friends. It's Cheryl from Tutoring with Cheryl, the tech coach for tutors. I am a reading tutor who supports kindergarten through fifth grade readers, but I'm also a tech coach for tutors. And my talk today is for the tutors. And I want to talk to you about marketing and sometimes how overwhelming that can feel. Okay. It's so overwhelming. Some days I'm just, my head is left spinning. But I know that as long as I stay present, that my tutoring families are going to find me. So I just want to share some, some things that have been working for me and to let you know some things I'm going to be trying because in my tutoring business, I have ebbs and flows. So sometimes I'm really busy and sometimes I'm not very busy. And I'm approaching a time um, in my tutoring business where I'm going to, it's going to kind of slow down. OK, and that is to be expected. I mean, I offer a service. My current students have been with me since August. OK, or the first part of September, whenever I started back this fall, I think I'm, I'm going to restate that since September. So my crew right now has started with me in September and they have been very committed. And the only breaks that they've taken have been the breaks that I've taken for family events or for a special holiday or something. So they show up, they're getting the work done. And guess what? Some of them are now graduating from my program. That's a very good thing to have. That's like, wow, yay, uh, super exciting. Um, but then that leaves me with some openings and gaps in my income, right? Because this is my job. And so I'm kind of looking at, okay, I've been pretty good about staying consistent on social media, but sometimes it, it I, I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes it's just like, oh, my heavenly days. I don't know if I've got another idea in my head, like literally. And so if you're feeling that way, I I can totally understand uh, where you might be. I got to need to turn the volume down on my phone there. So what can you do? What are some what are some suggestions of some things that you can do that will help you? So I've got three of them for you today. OK, I've got three. So the very first one that I want to talk to you about is email marketing. And that sounds so boring, so dull. Nobody likes email, right? Well, for for a long time, I have been working with Gmail. OK, which I love Gmail. Gmail is a uh, Google's mail system is wonderful. It, it does everything that I want it to do. Um, I could set up groups if I wanted to and email the group and, and do all that fun stuff. Um, but for me and what I want to do right now, it's not really going to work for me. So I have I have now switched over to ConvertKit. And what I have found with ConvertKit is I'm, I'm just I'm just learning this system, but I'm, I'm really I really like it. OK, um, what I found is that I can create forms or landing pages that then drive business my way. So if I ask a question and I include the form, then I can get the information. OK, so that's one thing that I want you to really consider about consider um, doing is I want you to really consider emails and how effective those emails can be for you. And I you can use ConvertKit for free. I went ahead and paid for it. I don't know if I actually needed to, uh, but I'm I'm going to keep I'm it's fine. It's a business expense. I can afford it. It's not like it's going to break the bank. Um, and and I'm getting really good. I, I'm getting good training with it. I've gone to the Creator University. I've watched lots of videos. Um, I get little emails from them, you know, um, advertising different things that I could either attend or read. And so I feel very supported and I feel like my knowledge is really growing. OK, so that's one thing to consider email marketing. And how are you going to share different things? So if you've got something going on for the summer, you know, craft a little email, put a little picture in and send it out and do it now and do it often so that you're sharing this message because. Parents need to see this message multiple times before they're like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll do that. Because honestly, it's April. Uh, it's April 25th, the day of, of, that I'm recording this. Some schools get out in early May, but many schools don't get out until June. So this isn't even really on their radar yet. OK, so that's one way. OK, the next thing that I'm, I'm going to tell you to do is really consider doing stories. Now, um, just a little bit ago, I made um, a video and I'll just pull that up for you. Okay, now instead of saying, so I've been saying camp and I've gotten some, I've gotten some people interested in it, but I'm going to try this week saying workshop. 
Okay. And the reason I'm going to say workshop is I'm going to see if that doesn't like capture somebody's attention in a different way. So I'm going to take this video and I like to apply um, a filter to it because I'm quite pale. So usually I put like a pearl to it to give me a little pink color like this one. Um, and then I will add a sticker. So in stories, you can click the sticker and then you can include the link. And my link is going to be um, the send me more information about your summer camps. Okay. So I'm, so I'm going to go into convert kit and I'm going to make a little, um, form in there that says, um, because I've got three and I can't put three links in there. So I want one, I want one landing page that says summer learning opportunities. And then inside of the form, I'm going to say, click on the one that interests you the most. And it, it will be my K through two, uh, live reading adventure camp, which I'm labeling a workshop in this one. But I might also put my login and learns in there. I'm not sure. So I'm going to really think about that before I'm actually, before I actually do that. Maybe I will just do the one that I was talking about. Okay. So now that I've thought about that, it makes more sense to do the workshop, but, or the summer reading adventure camp. But see, there, I talked to you about it. I had to talk myself through it. And, and I will literally find myself sitting right here doing exactly that. Like, oh, I got to kind of walk myself through that. Okay. So, so we've talked about email. We've talked about stories and that's a story on Instagram. And then let's see, there was another one that I had in mind that I was going to tell you. Oh yes. Please contact your local schools. Okay. And when you contact your local schools, ask for either the superintendent or the building principal. Okay. And then, um, if they're not available, say, would it be okay for me to mail uh, email them? They'll be like, oh, yeah, sure. And say, may I have their email? And then email them and introduce yourself to them. And I always reintroduce myself to them, even if they already know me. Mm -hmm. Good idea. And say, I've got a summer learning opportunity I'd like to share with your students. Um, I'm, you know, after you do your introduction, I'm going to show you a copy of that. I'd like you're okay. And would it be okay for me to bring it up to the schools, um, your school? Um, for you to distribute to um, your students. And if it's okay, how many copies would you need? Okay. And I recently, I, I'm in the process of still, I'm still waiting on an answer from one school and I've already delivered them to the other school. So I'm just going to concentrate on two schools. Uh, there's a third one, but then I got to thinking about that. And I was like, no, I think I'll just concentrate on the two for right now. So the superintendent at the one school immediately said, yes, bring it on up. Not a problem. So I took it up that week, like the next day. The other superintendent was on a break and um, I got an email uh, stating, I'm sorry, I've been on a break. I'm back, but I need to discuss this with my administration team first and then I'll get back to you. So that's kind of like, a, well, we're going to talk about it and see if we even want to share your information. And honestly, it doesn't bother me it, that I, I think I, I really hope that they see me as a partner in education not a competitor. Um, but my wording may have sounded competitive and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. I said no time, no time for summer tutoring or summer school. I can help. Okay. And maybe they didn't like that because maybe they're like, well, what's wrong with our summer program? So it's okay. And it's okay to be told no. It's okay to be told no. Now I've got one more bonus for you. And Kelly, uh, Michelle Duram, she has inspired me. She's on tutoring tips for teachers. And um, she and I, we network quite a bit. And she was talking about Google My Business. And bravo, Kelly, I agree with you. Um, and that is, I think, a very underutilized um, service. So I recently went back in and I updated all my links. I didn't even realize I had old links on there. I went in, I updated it. Um, and I'm going in a couple times a week just to do some things. And the more active you're Google my business profile is the higher the likelihood you're going to show up in a search and then therefore somebody's going to contact you. And I, I can tell you Kelly's method works because my twin sister does this. She's a realtor in Omaha and she literally runs her business off of Google my business. And she's got a button where people can contact her in the whole nine yards. Now, depends on how accessible you want to be to people as well. I just send them to um, my website. So I send them to my website and there's a contact contact me form on there. Uh, and people do use it. So I do want you to know that that it does work. 
All right, so instead of three, you got four pieces of information that can help you. Now, I've actually recorded this for two different groups. The first group I recorded it for was my Tech Hub for Tutors. Uh, so I'm always looking at ways to support my Tech Hub for Tutors. But because I know that this is a really timely conversation and tutors are looking for solutions, I'm also going to be sharing this out on YouTube as well. So if you want more information about the Tech Hub for Tutors, I'll just quickly tell you just a little bit about it. Um, it is a membership group. You can learn more about running your business online. But not only do I support the Tech Hub members with running their businesses online, specifically focusing on Google products, um, Google Meet, Google Classroom, uh, Google Docs, Slides, Forms, whatever, all of that. Um, and now um, I'm going to be um, talking to them about YouTube as well. And um, I'm also going to talk to them about Canva coming up here very soon, too. But I, I kind of pick and choose different topics for each month. So they get two monthly meetings with me. I schedule one in the morning and one in the evening, and they're always the same week. And I do that on purpose because um, I don't know if they're teaching where they're teaching, what time they're teaching, you know, I don't know all of that. And then I always record it. So sometimes I'm the only one in the meeting, but that's okay. And then I share it with them and then they have access to that. So you can be a monthly member and have access to that information for the month, or you can be a yearly member and just pay for it all up front. And so the current price for that is $25 per month or $250 for the whole year. So there are some savings for for that. So that is um, the Tech Hub for Tutors. And then um, I'm also going to add at the bottom of this, I have um, a kind of like, I, I don't know if I call it a mini course or like um, mini exploratory uh, library, I guess, uh, that I have for sale for, it's only $5, five uh, American dollars. And um, I will include that form on here as well, because there are four videos that I've curated that really talk through some other marketing um, avenues that you can take uh, to get your message out and to hopefully gain clients. Okay. Well, it was great chatting with everybody today. You guys make it a great day. And as usual, keep the learning going.